Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about comic books. We're going to talk about the comic book industry, the modern Western comic book industry in the state that it is in right now, which is not a terribly good state, right? Uh, you know, especially compared to manga. You look at manga sales where they're, you know, breaking records left and right, and uh, people are buying manga. Uh, and droves, uh, you know, that it's actually led to a shortage. Here in the West, it's a different story where you're actually having to, uh, you know, pull all kinds of uh, tricks, I think, retailer incentives and all that to make the numbers look good uh, for the comic book industry. And look, this is the worst kept secret in comics. The truth is, most comic book publishers now exist to pitch movies to Hollywood, uh, to pitch TV shows. To Hollywood, and this is you know definitely been the case with Marvel and DC lately. The only reason that they're probably still publishing comic books is that they're hoping to uh, you know get a couple of billion dollar franchises out of the hundreds and hundreds of series that don't connect with audiences. But it also seems to be the case with a lot of independent publishers too that they're they're trying to get into movies, uh, get into Netflix, and this is part of the. The big problem right now with the comic book industry is that uh, we're not making comics uh, to make comics. We're making comics as, as storyboards and pitches for Hollywood. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about uh, Kickstarter. I think this is pretty interesting uh, that uh, now they're like, hey, Kickstarter's going to save comics. It's like, where have you been for the last 10 years? And also Indiegogo. Uh, by the way, uh, thank you very much to those of you who backed us on Indiegogo recently. We did a second chance offer for Shadow Binders, and we wound up doing almost $85,000 for uh, reprints for books that we were just looking to, to get rid of, to gauge interest on continuing the series. Uh, you guys were amazing. We did way better than we thought we were going to, so thank you so much for that support. But yeah, Indiegogo is also a thing their insider. So we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 185,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, first, I'll touch on this Kickstarter thing because that's what everybody's talking about now. They're like, hey, the comic book industry is fine, everybody. Everything's okay. Even though Diamond, you know, crawled under the desk into the fetal position, abandoned publishers and shops, held on to people's money. Um, it was doom and gloom. We had Marvel laying people off, DC canceling books, but now everyone's latching on to Kickstarter, onto crowdfunding. And I remember a time not too long ago when uh, established comic book publishers looked down their noses at people that used Kickstarter. They referred to it as e-begging. Literally, it was e-begging. We don't need to e-beg. We're a real publisher. Well, we have a couple of high-profile successes on Kickstarter, like Todd McFarlane's Spawn, and uh, you know, more recently we had Boom Studios with Berserker and Power Rangers making all kinds of cash. Now all of a sudden, all of a sudden we're going to legitimize it. I I remember a time five or six years ago when the comic book industry tried to shame Archie Comics into pulling the plug on its Kickstarter, and they were successful. Archie pulled it down because it's like, yeah, Kickstarter is really not for people like us. It's for poor people. And uh, they pulled it down, you know, but Boom's like, hey, we'll take your money. And beyond Kickstarter, there's also Indiegogo. I know we're not allowed to talk about Indiegogo for whatever reason, but there are tons and tons of six-figure crowdfunding comics campaigns on Indiegogo. But now Insider wants to be like, hey, the pandemic ravaged comic books, shuttering stores and hurting it. This is a hell of a headline, by the way. <laughs> Shuttering stores and hurting its major distributor, but independent businesses and creators on Kickstarter are leading the way to a new era. You are 10 years too late. This has already been a thing. Uh, this has already been a thing. And now, now after, again, throwing shade at people using Kickstarter uh, for years, shaming publishers out of using Kickstarter for years, now the mainstream media is all going to be like, hey, everybody, Kickstarter's where it's at. Kickstarter was where it was at for a lot of independent comic book creators 10, 12 years ago. Uh, absolutely crazy that now, now we're going to talk about it. Now we're going to legitimize it. Now, what, in the last year or so, they've decided to roll the Kickstarter numbers into the uh, bottom line 
of the North American comic book sales figures because they're so bad. Uh, the sales figures are so bad for the North American comic book industry that they had to use crowdfunding to pad it out. You know, it's kind of kind of crazy, but this explains why there's so much gatekeeping at Kickstarter because comic book publishers were kind of looking at too, like, well, this is this is where the uh, the cheese has moved to, right? And I hate I hate that book. I hate that book. But you know what I'm saying, right? So let's talk about uh, the state of the North American comic book industry, especially indie publishers. Um, Geeky sent this over this morning, said, you're really going to like this one. Uh, it's about indie publishers racing to mine comics for TV and film. I would say strip mine uh, for sure. Uh, they're going to, they're definitely going to go scorched earth. Uh, they're, look, it's no secret. You read comics in the last five, 10 years most mainstream comics, they read like pitches. They read like storyboards. They don't read like comic books. Um, you know, we've got photorealistic characters. We've got a lot of talking heads, uh, situations that are filmable, right? Um, you're not talking like Jack Kirby levels of excess, you know, things that could only be filmed current year, with all the CG technology, you look at, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy and you look at uh, Thor Ragnarok and all these kind of Kirby-esque uh, designs that finally are able to live and breathe on the big screen at a cost, a huge cost to Disney to, to be able to produce that. No, what you're seeing are kind of smaller stories, lower budget comic book stories, because these aren't really comic books. Uh, they're Netflix pitches, they're movie pitches. And, you know, it's, it seems like the comic book industry is going to stop pretending that it's something that it isn't, right? Now, this comes from Graham McMillan, who I thought got fired from The Hollywood Reporter, but apparently he's back because this is like two days ago he put this up. But they're talking about these other publishers, uh, you know, Aftershock, Valiant. Uh, what are some of the other ones uh, that I've seen out there? Um, I wonder for the longest time how Lion Forge stayed in business, Oni stayed in business, because you would see they'd sell under a thousand copies of books. You know, sometimes they sold a couple hundred copies of books. It's like, how do they stay in business? They're staying in business because they're hoping to land some kind of a Hollywood deal. And that makes it all worth it. All you need is one big box office hit. And it makes all the years of just churning out, you know, these backdoor pilots uh, worth it, right? Um, so what's interesting is, is they are interviewing Axel Alonso. Now, I got to gotta bring up Axel Alonso. For those of you not familiar, Axel Alonso is the guy who was in charge of Marvel up until the end of 2017. And uh, he was kind of the one that was blamed for everything going wrong with Marvel Comics. And he got gone. He got replaced with C.B. Sobolski. And uh, Marvel, I don't think, is really course corrected all that much. But he's been pretty quiet. But now he's weighing in on the uh, the situation with with comics, and and this is a huge difference between manga, which exists just for the sake of existing to entertain readers, and North American comics, the vast majority of which exist to produce Netflix pilots. Right. Um, so Axel Alonso says there's something about comic books that are capable of that that no other media can match. Comics are the ideal medium for producing truly groundbreaking work that creates IP that can come alive for generations. He tells The Hollywood Reporter, comic fans are the vanguard of pop culture. They are incredibly discerning, so when a character, story, or series resonates with them, you know you have a hit on your hands. Again, <laughs> Axel Alonso, everyone, the guy who basically uh, ran the Titanic into the iceberg. Alonzo knows what he's talking about. Yep. Yep. Um, as editor and later editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics from 2000 through 2017, he was a key figure in guiding the company from bankruptcy to the cultural behemoth it became. Yeah, with Disney's help and Disney's money, returning key franchises such as Spider-Man and the X-Men to fan-favorite status. <sighs> Since 2018, he's been chief creative officer and editor-in-chief of startup publisher artists, writers, and artisans, one of a new generation of comic publishers po positioning themselves as the next Marvel to not only fans, but potential investors and business partners. This is 
everything wrong with comics right here. Those would-be competitors, including Aftershock Comics and Valiant Entertainment, are cultivating a financial model that focuses on a leaner publishing output. In comparison with indies like Image Boom and Dark Horse, the new guard is smaller in size, but arguably more centered on potential film and TV adaptations. Uh, somebody else that tried to position themselves as a company that produces uh, the Netflix fodder is IDW. And they've been chasing this for years to their own detriment. They've been losing money hand over fist trying to chase Netflix and Hulu deals. Uh, they've had shows canceled. They've had shows canceled before they got picked up. Uh, they foot the bill for pilots that never materialized. They're not a comic book publisher anymore. They're an IP factory. And that's what's going on here. Valiant is the same thing. And it had, uh, you know, what they do, the Bloodshot movie, and it was a huge, huge failure. Uh, that attracted the attention of business partners. Valiant uh, was brought, bought by DMG in 2018. Uh, mogul James Murdoch invested $5 million in AWA in 2019, so now we know what Axel Alonso has been up to. And Aftershock merged with distributor uh, Rivi Gauch last year. Uh, they've also hired away from Marvel. AWA's founders include Alonzo, uh, Bill Gemus, and Valiant includes uh, Peter Cuneo as chairman. Uh, well, yeah, they're jumping ship because Disney's uh, you know pruning Marvel these days. And Heather Antos, I think she jumped over there too. Uh, Valiant publishes a Marvel-esque shared universe of superhero properties, while Aftershock focuses on unrelated sci-fi and fantasy series envisioned as mini franchises. This is the problem. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here, but they do name check Berserker and all that. But, um, you know, here's the CEO of Aftershock. It, it shouldn't need to be said, but this industry is rife with companies that are little more than IP farms. The only way to be genuinely successful in this space is to be true to comics, their creators and their fans. There are no shortcuts. I, I, I That's lip service, man, because you are an IP farm uh, for sure. So this is, this is the truth, guys. This is why the comic book industry is in the state it's in. Because we stopped making comics that people wanted to buy just to read, just to be entertained. And we started chasing Hollywood deals, movie deals. You know, we saw this before. I'm thinking everybody's Platinum Studios now, right? Remember Platinum Studios? No, of course you don't. <laughs> you know, they were like a shell company. They existed just to strip mine comic book IP. And what they would do is they would artificially inflate, uh, like it was a, a Cowboys and Aliens, uh, get a movie deal, be like based on the hit graphic novel. And then they get a movie deal in the movie Tanks. And then the company just kind of, you know, dissipates. And it's a huge problem, you know? Uh, meanwhile, you look at the Japanese model. You look at what they do in Japan. The anime series actually sells books. You know, Demon Slayer would not be the hit it is, and Demon Slayer is selling hundreds of millions of copies if it weren't for the anime. They know this. They know people have to buy comics. That's actually where most of the money comes from, is from comic book sales and merchandise. And the anime, which would be an end goal here in the U.S., is just a vehicle to sell more books, you know, because the anime is always, you know, a couple of years behind where the, the manga is usually. So they look at it differently. They're like, we want to sell books. Here in America, we're like, uh, we just want to make books to get a movie deal because that's where the money is. And, and you really look at it and we, we'll probably do more videos on this in the future. The money is really not there. You know, everybody thinks they're going to be a Robert Kirkman and that, that, that is not going to happen. Just like everybody working in comics, indie comics, thinks they're going to be uh, Todd McFarlane. And that's not going to happen. Uh, so good luck with that. Uh, I think that we're going to see the uh, North American comic book industry continue to erode because of this mindset that this is all just, you know, storyboards and, uh, you know, something that they can trademark to, to put out a movie, um, proof of concept, you know, that's, that's not, that's not making good comics, right? Uh, people should want to make a movie of your comic book because your comic book is good. Going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. We'll talk later.